They're so familiar, we hardly notice them as they go about their daily business. But back in 1965, when the Ford Transit first appeared, it was a very different story. Baby, baby. Everybody wanted to drive a Transit. Most people wanted to own one. It didn't really seem to matter whether it was of any use to them. The Transit was a, 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 a van. It was almost a status symbol to have one. Everybody wanted to drive one. People used to stop when we were parked and come and ask if they could sit in it. Thirty years on, and with just one major facelift in 1986, the transit remains in production today. Nearly three million have been made, and they account for over half the vans sold in Britain. For the people who build them at the plant in Southampton, they've become something of a way of life. I only thought I'd work for Ford for six months. It was a case of come to Ford, earn some money six months a bit quick, get married, get out. By the time the six months had come, the take had passed. It was a case of then, oh, well, I need a mortgage, I need a house. So I thought I'd stay another six months until we got the mortgage sorted and then get out. Ron Peggs is still here 30 years later. His whole working life has been devoted to this one vehicle. He even moved with the transit to Southampton in 1972, when the old plant in Berkshire could no longer cope with demand. When he started with Ford in 1964, the transit had yet to be launched. First time I saw the transit was on a night shift. It certainly looked different. They were much bigger than anything that was on the market at that time. Most vehicles at that time were uh, built a bit like a brick. Um, I didn't think it would take off the way it did. I was wrong. Nothing is ever made by just talking about it. And the known problems were enough to start with. When plans for the transit were first discussed, the Ford companies in Britain and Germany were run as separate organizations, designing and building their own models. This time, the parent company in America wanted them to collaborate on a common vehicle serving both markets. As this had never been done before, Detroit sent over one of their own to act as coach and referee. Ford had the idea, Henry Ford II had the idea of a Ford of Europe way before it happened, and this was one of the things that they could experiment with. This experiment became the blueprint for how the future Ford of Europe would operate. The joint program for the transit, codenamed Project Redcap, was given the official go-ahead in 1961. Well, there we are, and there's the sliding door with those windows again. <clears throat> I always did like this contour on that end. Yeah, pretty much a car feature. Yep, that yeah. was indeed. And of course, you've got this nice short bonnet. Yeah, That's the secret good. of the whole thing. And if we move gently around here, Vans and trucks are a specialized market, and Ford's at that time was primarily a car company. On the car side, everybody's an instant expert. They all know exactly what you ought to do and why haven't you done it. Whereas in the truck and van side, the longer you're in the game, the longer you realize and the more you realize that perhaps you don't know too much about it anyway. Ford in Britain had had their fingers burnt with their previous van, the Thames or 400E. The flat-fronted design was too small and narrow to be a commercial success. It was dropped in 1964. With the transit, the engineers literally went back to the drawing board. 
Vans at the time were essentially boxes on wheels, slow and square. But the new age of motorways demanded bigger and faster designs. Increasing the width and therefore the payload was the first step. I can remember looking at a 400E and looking at a clay model of the transit and I couldn't believe how big the transit was. If the 400E, which was the predecessor, seemed, well, I saw them side by side, and one was so narrow, and the other one was so broad, and I thought, that's going to be stable on the road. From the drawings, a shape, a seating bunk, something three-dimensional. The sights were set very high for the target of ultimate cab comfort. By putting the needs of the commercial driver first, the transit introduced the idea that a van could be as easy and as comfortable to drive as any private car. We wanted a little bit more pep, more performance in the vehicle. We wanted these the walk across, walk through, ease of entry. The, the route drivers, uh, people that made deliveries, they'd have to get in 15, 20, 30 times a day, and we wanted to make it easy for them. We offered it with uh, a, a variety of doors and doors on either side and with the lift gate or with the clap hands doors in the back end. So we had things that the competition didn't have. The transit was based on car running components. The, the engine came from a car and the transmission was a car and the rear axle was a car. It was car size brakes. Um, the styling was done in the same studio that did all the car styling, so the influence was there anyway. Clay slowly becomes another shape, a shape with detail, something to indicate the real appearance. The smallest piece of trim reproduced, molded and shaped and changed again. Like a car, the transit had a bonnet, albeit a short one. This snout was controversial, and skeptics on the team dubbed the van the Little Pig. At the time, it looked so strange that how you could have classified it as pretty horrible. It was not something I was expecting. But on the other hand, the more you saw it, the more it made sense, and the more you got used to it. It seemed a little bit wild or, or outlandish to me, a little bit. The vehicles before were pretty plain. One, one fella sent me a picture of it, an outline of it, and he had a balloon, a con uh, comics balloon, you know, that you have in the, in the comic strips that said, where are the truffles? <laughs> <laughs> but these little piggies did go to market in 32 different guises from pickup truck to minibus. For its launch in October 1965, Ford Motor Company went on the offensive. Transit, the supervan. Big, fast, efficient. Smooth, easy to drive, easy to park. Big body, big choice of bodies. Transit takes on anybody. The van was an instant success and immediately grabbed 20% of its target market. 18 different door combinations. Driver comfort. Handles like a car. Walk through cab. Light, smooth clutch. It Fast soon became and has remained Britain's best selling medium commercial vehicle. More van for your money. More features than any other van. Transit is the super van. Ford's design team were either very incredibly lucky or very clever. They got the right vehicle at the right time for people like me that wanted to go places. I wanted to be a millionaire. I wanted to do things fast and furious. And the transit was fast and furious. It fitted in with what we wanted to do. It was so streamlined. It was so s smart looking. It was an Americanized uh, vehicle and we were driving old square box vans at the time and it was a difference between a racehorse and a cart horse actually it was so attractive looking and it just it just hung on me I, I, I couldn't get over it and I, I just knew I wanted one 
Today, Mike Henley runs a fleet of 10 trucks in Somerset. He still keeps transits for old time's sake. Without them, he would never have broken into the transport industry in the 1960s. Now, Britain's road haulage business is one of the most openly competitive in the world. But in the 1960s, it was a closed shop with entrance strictly controlled by a licensing system. Outsiders had to prove that they had customers who needed their services, and the system was open to abuse. If you applied for a license to operate a vehicle for hire reward, you had to sit in front of a board of people made up mainly by the established hauliers in your area. So as soon as you told them what work you wanted a license for, two things happened. One, you got turned down, and secondly, they were knocking on your prospective customer's door and took the work away from you. So you actually ended up never getting a license. But the system only applied to trucks over three and a half tons, and the transit fell well below that. The transit, of course, blew a hole through the established hauliers' uh, ideas of the time because it was under the three and a half tons. This meant that we could actually compete on equal terms with the hauliers. This was a new category of commercial vehicle, light in weight but able to carry heavy loads. Unfettered by regulations and laden up to the eyeballs, Mike Henley hit the road, hauling anything for anybody, anywhere. The transit was very fast and the motorways were just opening in those days and you could cruise at 70, 75, 80 miles an hour. We didn't have to abide by the rules and regulations and we didn't have to drive any particularly prescribed amount of hours. So I used to drive literally day and night and most people that had transit in those days did the same. They were so comfortable. One of the other things with the transit is that you never seem to get tired driving it. It's a very easy vehicle to drive. You get a lot of people, uh, a lot of drivers now, they call them day and night wallers. The fellows who work loading their own vehicles through the day and then travel at night, you know. Uh, against the regular trunk man, you see, and we think as, uh, as drivers that there should be a, some system device where to stop these night and day wallers. The hauliers did not know how to deal with this. It was a new phenomenon to them. They didn't know what to do or how to stop us because, of course, their customers loved us. We were doing everything that they were doing for less money and we were doing it twice as quickly. There shouldn't Definitely. be such a thing as private enterprise on these roads today. There shouldn't be. No. And why? Well, because simple reason, there's too much cutthroat in. The unregulated newcomers also began to attract the attention of the police. The transit was like a red rag to a bull. They almost always assumed that if you were in a transit, you had to be running illegally. You were either overloaded, uh, going too fast, or hauling the wrong stuff, stolen property. And again, to a certain extent, of course, the transit did get a reputation. It was used by the, 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 the criminal fraternity, if you like. Um, but being a transit driver to the police meant that you were trouble. But it wasn't long before the police fell for them as well. The adaptable chassis provided them with a range of vehicles tailor-made for all occasions. Get hold of him in the front here. For Christ's sake, what's the with you? <laughs> Bleeding dick. Hold up. Hold up. The opposition weren't far behind. The transit was said to have been used in 95% of bank raids in 1972 alone. It was soon dubbed Britain's most wanted van. If you were out robbing um, a bank, and there were four or five of you, and four or five sacks of money and weapons and stuff, to get into a Jag or a fast car was hopeless, whereas with one of these, you could just sling it all in the back and you'd be away. Quite often, if we were at the station and a call came out as if someone required urgent assistance, then chaps would pile in the back and the object would be to get away quickly. It was an easy van to drive than the old vans were having. It was faster, the takeoff was much better, the steering was easier, and a much more comfortable vehicle to drive.
you know, as robberies got bigger, you needed, like, more bodies to do it. You couldn't do them two or three of you in a, in a car, you, so you needed, like, five or six. And so the transit was ideal. Whenever a Ford Transit was stolen in the six, late 60s, early 70s, we always circulated them straight away because these were the vehicles that were being stolen to be used by the opposition. If the police saw you and you were four or five of you in a Jaguar, I mean, you were very pullable. Whereas in the back of a vehicle, nobody could... In the back of a transit van, nobody could see you. So they didn't know who was in it. Unless, of course, it was heavily weighed down. But if you had the long wheelbase one, um, he didn't notice. But the transit service to the police didn't end here. It also provided them with the perfect camouflage for undercover surveillance work. The Ford Transit, as a surveillance vehicle, was quite good in that there were so many of them about. One parked up on the side of a road, in a factory, on a housing estate, may well wouldn't show out as being a police vehicle. You could just smell them a mile away. You know, you could see their motors plotted up outside, like your local pub or outside your house, and you'd hear it creaking while they were moving around inside and looking through little holes in the side, and you should just go past and go like that to them. The Sweeney's doing 90 because they've got the word to go. They get a gang of villains in a shed up at Heathrow. They're counting out the fibers when the handcuffs lock again. In and out. But it's the Transit's association with the music business that has brought it true fame. Well, uh, the Luton Transit. This is, I can see a later one. The early ones had a. Me. Luton Transit was very popular with all groups. Uh, um, for years, because not only could you fit uh, quite a lot more equipment in them, but also at the early stages, in the embryonic stages of a band's career, you could also fit the whole band into the back of uh, a transit this size as well. This has been one of the most enduring relationships between man and van. The transit, in all its guises, remains the favoured mode of transport for aspiring bands. And bands would have much rather have had, uh, you know, a great big comfortable car or something like that, or a Learjet. But it's only, uh, you know, the modest budgets that dictate that you were stuck with a transit. And there's nothing wrong with a transit, but they are, as you can see, really designed for taking equipment, not so much people. Although once furnished with your own few belongings and the odd little picture up, you know, they can become quite uh, jolly. I do remember them going to uh, Torquay, I think it was, we sat like this, looking, waving at people out the back, and then we'd have jokes pulling the thing down and then pretending to murder somebody as the thing just finally went down, and we'd howl with laughter and then sit there coughing on the fumes. Going on the road is the lifeblood of any new band, but the first tour abroad in the back of a transit can prove something of a disappointment. It was the middle of winter, I remember we had lots of coats and it was freezing cold. But I thought, never mind, because I'm going to see abroad for the first time. We got to Holland and we unloaded off the ferry and I remember we, the, the thing got unloaded and I suddenly realised I wasn't going to see anything because it was too cold to have the back open. And so we were just stuck and it was just like this, you could sort of hear the rain and the snow. But then, above the... Uh, above the cab, just here, there was a sort of round hole about sort of that big and we would take it in turns to look through at our first glimpse of abroad, um, which was uh, Holland at the time. And it looked very beautiful uh, through that little hole of the transit. It's bringing lot, back a lot of memories sitting in the back of this transit. Really, of, of, of um, things you missed, you know, sights, beautiful days, that, and beautiful landscape that we might have driven through. And I remember Gilson Lavis, the drummer, always saying, especially when you sit in the back, looking out the windows at the back or looking out the shutters if it was up, and he'd say, it always seems so negative, because, you know, we're never looking where we're going. We're always just looking where we've been all the time. Very sad. Commercial vehicles have to earn their keep. The transit success in the second-hand market is a key factor in its survival. 
Roland Hill's family have been buying and selling second-hand transits in the Old Kent Road for nearly 30 years. Got a nice selection at the moment, Roland. In the early days, demand was fueled by the long waiting lists for new ones. This one's the third one. Yes, indeed. That's a, look, that's a lovely motor. I've got some blue ones coming yes, in, which that's are a lovely your, um, they're your sort of van, aren't yes, they? Yes, yeah. We've always had an image of um, Old Kent Road with um, tarmac and Alsatian dog. They're going to get bitten when they come in to um, actually see it. As soon as I say to anybody, I'm a van dealer in the Old Kent Road, they, they sort of laugh and nudge nudge. But it's, it's not quite like that anymore. It hasn't been for a number of years. It's, it's not too bad. Inside's very clean, obviously. The, um, yes, the seats the haven't been worn at all. It's no. low mileage. But it's your colour blue, you see. And um, yes. let's have a look. It's, it's got the five-speed box. It's also uh, fully alarmed. So yeah. you've got all the alarm on this one. Tires looks good. are pretty good. It looked quite nice. I mean, if you didn't want the strip on there, you can always take that off. Yes, of course, that but um, that I still give you, as you know, the year's guarantee, parts and labour. That's so and it'll okay. be serviced before you take it. Right. So you've got oh, everything good. that you need on that. And the radio is in it? Yeah, I'll let that's you have the radio. At auction, Roland goes in keen pursuit of the perfect second-hand transit. Before the bidding begins, he gives them the once-over. The mileage is 74, which for the year isn't bad, but I also look for the, the seats damaged on the side. The uh, inside carpet's got holes in it, so it could have had a lot of uh, round town work rather than motorway work. The back floor, if it's all been damaged, then um, I'd be a bit wary because obviously it's carried lots of weight. <coughs> Pretty good. It's been resprayed. This particular one says 25,000, so I would imagine it's on 125,000. Uh, let's have a look. This is a banger. 5150 again. Come on. 50. Sold. 9. 39. 39. 25. I don't mind that, but a 50. 75. Four fills it up. Four and mid, four and mid, four and mid against you now. Bit of all, 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 bit of all. All done. Sold. T. Thank you, sir. The second hand transit is the mainstay of the one man band. For gypsies like Nobby Penfold, it's a way of making a living. I do a lot of landscape gardening and uh, deliver logs and things. It's adequate for carrying chainsaws, lawnmowers. I can put a roof rack ladder on top of it and carry double extension ladders, scaffolding if I need it, cement mixes and things like that. Transits continue to serve long after they've reached the end of their active life on the road. They become donors of vital mechanical organs which prolong the life of others. I've got one on the left of me here. As you can see, someone has had the windscreen the doors, the windows out of the doors. They've, had, they've changed the tyres at different times. They've even changed the, some of the seats over. But basically, at the end of the day, when we finish, we can take the whole thing away if necessary. We try and keep them as long as possible because there might be a, a thing you don't foresee, like a petrol tank leak. You can change a petrol tank over, which is no trouble. Springs, prop shafts, gearbox. You name it, we can do it, we change them over. I've, done, I've actually done this myself. I think from scratch, if I had this vehicle on my left and that one on the right, me and one of my colleagues, my relations, we could start in the morning about 9 o'clock, and by 1.30, we'd have the two completely changed over. The gypsy community has been associated with the transit van from the beginning. It soon saw off their more traditional form of transport. Full Transit has taken over completely from the horse. The Full Transit is actually carting the horse about. If an horse is unfortunate and breaks a leg, you've got to, you lose it completely. But with a Full Transit, you can repair it. 
that is the difference there, I can say. Repairing a brand new transit might prove a little more challenging. With the sophisticated engineering and electrics that you'd expect in any modern car, the little pig has come of age. For people like Ron Peggs, who have witnessed this transformation, the transit survival into the 1990s is cause for celebration. Gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? My name is uh, Jeff Body, and I'm the new plant manager here. And uh, at this point, a special thank you is required for all the loyal and dedicated service given by all of you to Ford and the Transit. There is a total of at least 1875 years' service in this room. 1875 Ford years service. Ron Peggs is here to mark his 30 years at Ford's. These long service dinners are a company institution, but in Southampton they have also become a tribute to the transit itself. It's been a very good vehicle of transit to us. Um, I don't feel romantic to it like some people do with old collector's cars because it's been a fast-moving vehicle. Um, from its very early days, it's been updated and improved, and it's continually being improved to this date. So you don't feel affection to it like you would um, a classic car, as I said earlier, but it's given me complete security. Um, it's been a good vehicle and a good product. It's given me a very nice lifestyle, too, thank you. It has been a major part of my life and I think it's been a very successful vehicle and as such I'm quite proud of my association with it. They're very modern looking now. I'd quite like to buy an old one actually looking at him. You've got me very nostalgic for the, for the original. When did the first one come out? There's no way that I would ever actually not have a transit on the firm. That's where I came from, and I'm going to stick with it because uh, it's it's a it's a part of me actually. Friday at 8.30, we meet those with a passion for the Airstream Caravan, made entirely of aluminium and nicknamed the Silver Bullet. Comedy next tonight on BBC Two with Red Dwarf.